Alright, <laughs> doing the most elaborate setup here. I want to record myself on my phone, and that does have a front camera, but the front camera is much lower quality. I'd rather use the back camera if I can, but if I do that, I can't see the screen, so I can't tell if I'm in frame or not. I don't want to record like a 20 minute video, then find out I wasn't in shot. So I've got my iPad set up behind my phone. My iPad is using its front facing camera, so it is effectively just a mirror. I don't have a mirror I can actually use. Um, and that is showing me what's on the screen of my phone, which is <laughs> facing away from me. Uh, so I hope this works. Uh, after all that, I didn't have a, the energy to set up the microphone because I've got a little clip on mic now that should be better quality, but that's not happening. The other thing I'm gonna be careful of is I can't touch the table in any way because all of this is balanced on a series of cardboard boxes that <laughs> will vibrate like crazy if I jog anything. Even though just me jogging the floor might mess it up, so we'll see. I've been playing Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 a bunch. Um, this all started because I was looking for inspiration for UI design on Wizards, and I specifically were looking for um, icons in a skill tree that show that they've been upgraded, like how do you sort of dress that up to make it look exciting and, and stuff. And I was just looking through the UI reference and I uh, came across a screenshot of Diablo 2 resurrected skill tree. Um, because uh, it, it caught my eye because I love Diablo, the whole series really, um, but in particular Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, the skill tree was wildly exciting to me. And the, the shot of Diablo 2 Resurrected also caught my eye because it wasn't quite how I remember it. It's, they've sort of had to up-res it, and my interpretation is that they must have had to account for just larger screens. Obviously, resolution is, is way higher these days than, than in Diablo 2's day. It was actually 640 by 480, I think, was like the game's default resolution back then, um, which is insane. Uh, and I think high res mode was 800 by 600 or something. Um, so that's all uh, had to be completely redone art-wise. But then they also just have this huge frame around it now. Um, and my theory is that just screens were just smaller overall back then, even though like resolution aside, they were just smaller. And so back then the skill tree needed to fill the entire screen. And these days that feels absurd because it's just too much. But anyway, there's something about that where they didn't have that much to show on screen, but they had a lot of space to do it in. And then also Diablo 2's um, uh, skeuomorphic, I think is the, the phrase, design, uh, basically a UI that looks like it's a real thing. It's got a texture of stone and gold and stuff. Um, I actually find that really appealing in this context. And it just triggered this, this wave of excitement for that, where like, oh fuck man, I was so into that back in the day. And there is something about Diablo 2 and Diablo 1 that Diablo 3 doesn't have. And that's actually what I want to talk about now that I've played both extensively, 2 and 3. I'm leaving 1 out because I don't think 1 really had that much that 2 doesn't. Uh, 2 was kind of just bigger, better, more. Um, it didn't really throw much away except just the, you know, the, the, the smallness of the original, which did have a certain charm to it, but that wasn't uh, anything I'm mega interested in. What I'm really interested in is, is the skill tree and how you level up and how you build your character and how the two games differed in their approach on this. Because Diablo 3, um, for anyone who didn't follow it at the time, was basically sacrilege. <laughs> it was, and it, I, like, to its great credit, and I feel like you don't get this from Blizzard that much anymore, it was a brave move, like a wild swing, um, to just throw out the idea of skill permanence. Diablo 2 and Diablo 1, every time you level up, you get a skill point. You put it into a skill. Often that will be unlocking a completely new skill you didn't have before. Um, and then once you've got all the ones you want, you put, start putting points into ones you already have to upgrade them. And those decisions were permanent. I don't think there was any way to respec in Diablo 1. Um, and in Diablo 2, I don't know if it was how you could respec. I know that in Diablo 2 Resurrected, there is a way to respec, but it's new. It's not one that was, that was in there before, because uh, I would have remembered. Um, but whatever the particulars, in Diablo 1 and 2, your decisions were seriously permanent. They were, they were absolutely um, a big deal. Um, and that, I think, is tied up with my, how excited I got about it. Like, the, the idea that you're sort of permanent improving your character was a big deal. I don't get as excited in Diablo 3 when I level up, because in Diablo 3 the way it works is that level ups just unlock new skills and new variants of skills, um, any of which you can equip uh, in one of six slots at any time. Um, and in fact, they've changed this now, but <laughs> when it launched, you could do that mid-combat. So, like, you did sort of have a build, and these are the six skills that were convenient for you to cast. They were on hotkeys, 
But if you wanted to, and if you were quick enough, you could have brought up the interface and slotted a new skill into your hotbar during combat to cast something different. Um, and they've got rid of that. I, I remember thinking that was crazy at the time. Like, at least stop me from doing it in combat. Like, I'm, I like generous games, but this is too generous. This is ridiculous. Now it's sort of like a... Um, I mean, it commits the old game design sin of the most effective way to play is a huge pain in the ass because the most effective way to play is always cast the right skill for the right situation and I can technically cast any of these if you let me change skills in combat but I don't want to I don't want to have to sit through a menu and have that be the determinant of my success um, and they turn it off which is good but still it is a game in which you just every time you level up um, there is no no reason not to just sort of throw out all your skills and just slot in a whole bunch of new of new skills, working in the new one you just unlocked into some kind of build that makes sense, and then try that out for a bit. And that is basically what I do when I play it. Um, but you do settle into a favorite build. You find some stuff that's especially effective, and you combo stuff that's also especially effective, and actually you kind of get into a bit of a build lock situation where these things synergize. Not They're not mega strongly tied to each other, but you just kind of get into this rhythm of like, oh, I like to teleport in and then freeze myself, and then cast my disintegrated beam and this this all fits together and by then my archon mode has it has recharged or is off cooldowns and i can cast that and if you then say now you've unlocked meteor i'm like i don't really know where meteor fits into this build i guess i'll try it i'll just put up my right click for a bit and just throw it around and see how much damage it does and i think oh yeah that's kind of nice but i don't really see how it fits into this and so that's the pattern for a while and then every sort of maybe 10 levels you get enough stuff that you've been reading these descriptions of like oh now my frost nova when it hits things it also means they take more damage from ice damage in future uh, uh but i don't have any other ice damage i'm not using the frost nova at the moment but i do remember there's this other thing that sort of also magnifies cold damage or increases their weakness to cold or something and so i can see there's a synergy they're kind of setting up for me here and i don't have any other pieces so maybe every 10 levels i'm going to say fuck it let's try all cold let's take all those things that you said synergizes and try it and if you're anything like me, you try it out and you think, oh, cool, this all works together. I'm, I'm, I get to combo this stuff. I get I sort of get this feeling of efficiency. But the actual rate of success I'm having, the actual amount of damage I'm doing and how, how much damage I'm taking is pathetic compared to what I had before. Like my build for a wizard is um, this uh, disintegrator beam that just goes through everything. I think I use either the Chaos Nexus room for it, which hits other things around me while I'm casting, which just negates what, one of its only weaknesses. Or the intensify one, which is just it's just more damage, uh, which is always hard to say no to. Um, and then uh, Archon, which is big magic shadow mode that is just sort of automatically great if you, as soon as you can cast it, but has a long cooldown. But then all my gear is designed to reduce the cooldown, so then I take some other stuff that's cooldown based. And then I have like three different skills that basically just let me do more damage and make me generate more arcane power, so I can keep doing this into great beam thing. And it's really fun coming out with that. That is awesome. Like, that is so much more engagement and um, tinkering and, and just mechanics in designing a build than I could ever put into Dabo 2. Because Dabo 2 is just a huge menu of, like, percentages, basically. <laughs> like, all these different skills, all of the percentage things. And the effective builds are just not at all intuitive. You would never just, just sort of get them from... I mean, you can't experiment, so you can't experiment to find out. And you also can't just intuit them from looking at the numbers. Apart from anything, you can't see how they will level up. You just see that the first level you get 20% extra damage with this weapon type. I think let's say like the one the assassin skill that lets you do your, your punchy claws thing better. Uh, I think the first point in it gives you sort of 30% extra attack rating with it. But the second point gives you, you know, uh, changes that to 35%. So when you put the first point in, you don't know you can't just keep upgrading by 30% each time. It's gonna be a much smaller thing. So you just can't design builds that way in Dabo 2, short of just going on a wiki and finding out. And when you go on a wiki and find out, I played Assassin in Dabo 2 on this run, and the Assassin has these martial arts things. Uh, she has basically traps that she can lay down, and then martial arts that where there's builders and finishers. Is it like combo builders or something? Um, so you do a bunch of punches that, and like the, f the first three punches all kind of step up the benefit you're going to get. So there's one that I think just increases damage, I guess. Um, there's one that maybe increases knockback. Maybe not. But, but there's one that like increases elemental damage. So, like the first punch is going to add shock damage to your finisher. The second punch is going to add uh, cold damage to your finisher. And then the third one's going to add fire damage to your finisher. And then you do your finisher. All those three things kick off. Or if you've only done one or two, yada yada. Um, something weird is going on. Oh, there's like, some notifications coming up on my phone and I can't read it because it's vertical. <laughs> It's reflected in my iPad, uh, and it's also going through a whiskey glass, <laughs> so it's distorted in several different ways. I don't know what that was saying. Probably saying I'm running out of space or something. Um, 
so yeah, I merrily sort of started plugging points into that, thinking I'll build my way towards some kind of build of, of I think I saw some some stuff lower down about like um oh that there was a combo one that steals mana, I think, or steals mana and health or uh, maybe just mana. And I like the sound of that because that will let me stay in the frame or I build up that, then I'll hit them and I get all of my health back and that's kind of cool. Um and then I, eventually I, I kind of felt lost in the weeds and I wasn't really getting much done with the martial arts stuff. So I looked on the wiki of like, what are some good builds? And it turns out like one of the finishes, the first finisher you get is just this kick that knocks people back. It's described as just a knockback attack. Um, but it turns out unbeknownst to you and uncommunicated anywhere in the interface is that once you get like seven points into that, you do two kicks. And then I don't know, 14, kick, 14 points into that, you do start doing three kicks. And basically it's just a very, very fast attack. And the sort of accepted best build for Assassin, or one of them, is to just put all your fucking points into that. Don't do any build up at all. Don't even put a single point into them. Don't even do them. <laughs> you just do the finisher with no build up at all. It's called a finisher. You would think it, it benefits from the build up. No, don't do that. Just put all your points into that and it just kicks really fucking fast. <laughs> and that just, the, the overall DPS of that just works out to be way better than fucking around with any of the actual mechanics of that class. <laughs> and so, that's how you're supposed to play Assassin, but you would never know from the game. And the game is explicitly telling you not to do that, basically. It's saying, you know, Finisher is for benefiting from these, these build-up things. Um, and, like, I don't mind... Obviously, that's not really what Blizzard sort of want you do, I guess. Like, they didn't design it that way, because I think the designers would have liked you to engage with the systems. Uh, but if the numbers work out that way, then it kind of... It starts to feel... There's a special feeling. There should be, like, a German word for it, where you kind of know what you should be doing, what the designer wants you to do, what might be even be more fun and sort of feel better. Um, and you do it, but you know there's another build out there that's just completely degenerate and just like, you just do one thing over and over again, but you just plug the numbers in and it just works out this way. Like players always find those builds and the wiki would always have something of like, the game thinks you should balance this and this and this, but actually you just want to do this one thing to the exclusion of all else and never vary from it. <laughs> and the presence of that one thing, even if you don't do it, harms the rest of the game. Like when you're playing in the nice, good, healthy way that the designer wants you to do and being a good little player, uh, you're haunted by this, yeah, I'm just not as effective as the guy who's just fucking pumping points into the kick and kicking a million times a second. <laughs> so yeah, the Dabber 2 method doesn't really work for me. Um, and then it has another problem, which is I'm now in hell um, and my build is falling behind the curve now. It's not really paying off. I, was, I won't put any traps heavy because of that martial arts thing. I've got the, the multi-kick thing and I, I did invest in that to some extent, but I'm not going to just put points to that. It's boring as fuck. So I'm throwing out traps and I've got a trap I really like, but that's not actually the one that everyone says is the most powerful. So I'm sort of half-heartedly investing points into the one that people say you should use for like an effective late game build. Um, and yeah, not surprisingly, splitting your focus that way doesn't... Uh, really get you a, a particularly strong late game build and you just sort of can't really tell how much damage things are doing and how effective they really are with traps you're throwing them out there and stuff is dying uh but you never get like a scientific comparison of like this one seemed to kill this mod you know 30 percent faster than this other one um the one i like just sends out a blade that just bounces between two points and i like it because it's fun to line enemies up into that like have them walk into a corridor and then send the blade up and down the corridor and just mince them all um that's super cool it actually seems pretty effective um, but there's nothing else to do. Like, that's the only skill, <laughs> that's the only trap that I wanted to put points into. And all I'm unlocking later is just other kinds of traps that you put down, and this one can do lightning, and this one can do fire. And it's not even a case that having multiple types benefits you inherently, because they're all on individual cooldowns. So uh, you can have them all at once. You can also have multiple copies of the same one. So if you just have one really good one, having a lot of that, it, you know, is just as good or better than having one of each different kind. Um, so having multiple types has no inherent benefit to it either. So you can see where they redesigned it for Dabo 3. Dabo 3, you've got maybe a smaller number of, of skills as such, but each skill has five variants, I think, um, and it will change the kind of elemental damage it does, it will sort of buff its damage, but increase its cooldown, or the other way around, or it will, you know, uh, this version of it is cheaper uh, to cast, something like that. And, I mean, that kind of stuff, if I was doing my zigzaggy assassin trap, I'd love to have varied that in five different ways. Um, but, yeah, as I say, Dabber 3, you just, your builds feel very cheap. You don't feel like, I haven't made a, a character, really. I, I've got a preferred set of skills I quite like. Um, and I, over this long of a timeline, that starts to feel like stagnating rather than really having a build. Whereas Dabber 2, 
also feels like stagnating, but at least <laughs> it's like, this is who I am. I've made some choices about my character and, and um, specialized them in this way. Um, Diablo 2 and Diablo 1, the problem always was you could just make like straight up mistakes. You could just put points and skills that were just bad and you just shouldn't have done it, <laughs> especially combinations of skills. You put points of that and you put points of that, those don't have anything to do with each other, mate. You made a mistake and it was 16 hours ago, so <laughs> there's no way to undo it. Um, Diablo 2 Resurrected has, has added a respec option uh, at the local witch. You can just go to her and pay for a respec, I think it's like a thousand gold or something quite cheap. Um, and <laughs> again, completely uncommunicated to you and unbeknownst to you. If you do that, that's the only time you get to do it in the entire run through. Uh, you're going to have to complete not just the, the full game, but the expansion as well before you'll ever get a chance to respec again. Um, because after that you have a sort of new game plus difficulty and you go through again and you get one more respect for doing that. I did not know that was the case. And so I resisted it for a little while. I didn't, I didn't undo the first couple of mistakes I made, but somewhere in Act 1 I was like, all right, I'm pretty sure I've gone down the wrong path of this, this uh, thing. And I, I'd like to try, I think actually it, it was that I initially tried these martial arts combos, then I read that they, they don't really work out and you should just do the multi-kick thing. And I was like, well, that's kind of boring, but I do like the sound of just kicking a lot of times in a row. And I'll still do my fun trap thing that I like. Um, and I respect then, and turns out that was way too early because now I've got some real complaints about my build and I can't respect anymore. Um, and it just, I mean, it's so obvious to me that the, the sweet spot is between these two things. Like, Diablo 3 is, is, is too light and loose and uh, no investment, um, and in some ways commits to kind of the same sin. Maybe all RPGs and action RPGs sort of commit this sin where there's just a kind of boringly good build like just, like anytime you just offer me more damage that's gonna work out mate that's gonna pan out that's just gonna be the best option because damage kills things <laughs> and after they're dead they can't hurt me i don't really care about doing more ice damage to them if it's not just more damage damage <laughs> um I, yeah, I respect my wizard in Diablo 3 is like a proper ice build, or I'm level 70 or something now. Um, or I think it's 60, 68 or something, 70 is the cap, and I haven't had that. Uh, and I thought, let's see, with all of this power, like, I've committed to rule this thing, what's the, what's the pure ice build? And it, like, it works. I, some things sort of synergize, I don't take as much damage, but the, the actual rate at which I kill things is like 20% of what I do with just the damage build. So I go back to the damage build. And so it's hard to separate, like, that just sucks. That would probably suck no matter what the system is, <laughs> no matter how respect works, no matter how investment works, if there is just a build that's just way better. And my, my build, that one is not from the wiki, by the way. I haven't looked at what the wiki says is the best wizard build. Um, it's probably not that, and there's probably some other synergies. Um, but mine is, I mean, it's lose-lose, right? Either I, I stick to this build because I invented it, you know, invented, but it, it's, I didn't, get it from someone else. <laughs> it came from my, my instincts. Um, and it seems to work really well, uh, but it's boring because I've been stuck with it for so long. Um, if I vary to something that isn't that, it's always less effective. Um, as, you know, from, from all the things I can come up with, all the synergies I can see, and all the, the theory crafting I can do, uh, I just come up with stuff that's just straight up worse. Uh, and then if I go on the wiki and look at what they say is the best thing to do, and then I do that, that's even more boring, right? <laughs> even if it's different to my current build. Uh, it's not really exciting just to copy something with my wiki and just do that. So it all kind of fails. Um, and in a way, it feels like both systems are flawed. Diablo 3 is less flawed. The flaw is less serious. The, the lack of investment and, and um, the fact that the tuning is a bit off um, aren't um, mega terrible problems. But the sacrifice it makes to get there is more significant. Diablo 2, the, that feeling of actually building a character and actually investing in it, it has a bunch of subtle connected effects on the appeal of the game that aren't obvious from the maths of it. Like on paper it seems like a worse system because you invest, you can make mistakes and, and you, you just end up in, in bad situations. But you still built a character and I think in an RPG, especially a fantasy RPG, like a big part of the draw is just asking you like, who do you want to be? In, in fantasy land, who are you? Like it's called fantasy. I, I, I didn't discover that for a long time after being into fantasy and sci-fi. That, that one of them is just called fantasy. <laughs> like I used, yeah, I used to call it sci-fi medieval, I think, like Lord of the Rings, like 
not historical stuff, I would call it medieval because it's just that's the sort of technology level. Um, and I was surprised to learn that's just called fantasy. Isn't it all fantasy? Isn't sci-fi also a fantasy? Isn't just some stuff that's neither sci-fi nor medieval also fantasy? But no, there's just a genre called fantasy. And actually it's not, I mean, I don't think that's a very good naming choice, but <laughs> I do see one bit of wisdom in it, which is that I think more than almost any other setting, its fans flock to it to because they have like an internal sense of who they would be in this world or just some ideas about who they might want to be in this world. And it might not just be one thing, like, you know, we contain multitudes. Um, but uh, I certainly have like a certain theme and a certain kind of character I like to be in these worlds. And that's such a big part of the draw. And when you're really just a kind of container for a bunch of skills that are going to swap in and out of these little buttons on your toolbar, that's a different fantasy. It's actually what put me off World of Warcraft too. So it is kind of a blizzard tendency. Um, just realizing that, you know, I was a level, let's say, 40 warlock. And I just realized I'm the same as every other level 40 warlock. There is no, there's nothing personal about my character at all. <laughs> like, I get every time you level up, you buy the skills, weirdly. That's such a strange decision. I never understood that. Because they're not expensive and they shouldn't be. Because you need to get all of them. So why am I buying them? And it just makes it so mercenary and so detached from like your character actually getting better. It's just, no, you should go to someone and pay them to give you the skills. Uh, and then you always get all of them. So I, I have the same skills as everyone else at the same level as me. And there's talents, but they're just like 1% of a 1% chance to do 1% extra damage on a Tuesday only and only if you're standing in water. They're just pathetic. So, yeah, there's, I feel like that and Diablo 3 system both kind of miss this, like, key thing in, in fantasy games. And Diablo 2 is not, I'm not vouching for it because it is terrible to let the player make deep, un, unfixable mistakes about their character. And even if they don't make mistakes, I don't think I really made, like, mistakes as such that I haven't, like, ruined my character in Diablo 2. I'm just fucking bored of it. I just, it's the same play style everywhere I go. And... I need some ability to change that, but I don't want it to not even be a thing that needs changing in the first place, like a, not even have an identity. You want to, to build up an identity, but to have a way to, to modify it, partly to fix mistakes and partly just to try new things, but not constantly, not all the time. I think the way I would do it would be um, something like every five levels, let, let's talk in Dabo 2 terms. So Dabo 2, you, you you don't get that many new skills, really, uh, you know, by level, what am I, level 30, something like that, maybe level 40. Um, and I probably got six or eight skills that I actually use. Um, so I would say, like, every five levels, you get a respect point. And a respect point doesn't wipe your character clean. It just, you can un undo one ability. And that doesn't mean one skill point. It means everything you put into that one ability. So if I went for the multi-kick thing and I put 12 points in it, and uh, it's fun, uh, you know, it's cool, but now I kind of want to try actually comboing some martial arts and doing that kind of stuff. Uh, with the, the reset point I earned at level five, I can just undo that one choice and get 12 points back, put them wherever I want. They can be in different skills, like it'll be in the same skill. Um, and then I can't do that again for another five levels, or, you know, depending on how many I've, I've stocked up. Um, and yeah, we're sort of thinking about something like that for wizards. I don't know, we don't have as much, as many skills in total, and there isn't that much sort of investment and there aren't that many ways to make a mistake in your, in your wizard's build. You have to be very careful about that. When you, <laughs> they used to have some, some crappy perks in there just to make the other perks look better, basically, to make you more excited about them. And then I realized, oh, some people might just pick the crappy perks. And then they kind of, it's hard to design levels not knowing whether the player has any good perks at all. So we just grabbed them. It was kind of a, 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 a sort of, I don't know, cheap thing to do, I guess, in the first place. So I'm happy to lose those. Um, and yeah, we might do something where we let you just earn some respec points in some other way. But I definitely think limiting respec is the way to go. And it's surprising how few games really do that. Like Borderlands has respec and you have to pay for it, but the amount of money you have to pay is so small that it's basically free. And there are some where the, co the cost of respecing goes up and up and up, and I quite like that, but it still feels a bit mercenary just to have it be money. I feel like it just should be limited by character levels. Just the more choices you've made, for every X choices you make, you get one chance to undo some of those choices. 